Hello, my name is Sebastian, and today we'll be going through the basic AGM and Task Force Radio. You can start by pressing Control and left Windows key. You'll get up a menu, and this is your self-interaction AGM menu. You'll see on top you'll have self-treatment, followed by equipment, explosive, gestures, team management, check temperature and repack magazines. If you have any other equipment, you'll have something like open kestrel or anything else. We'll start by going through self-treatment on top. If you press that, you'll get a new menu. From top, you'll have diagnose, inject morphine and several bandage options. If you press diagnose, you'll see a little menu on your right hand side. It says the patient, your awake status, if you're injured, if you're bleeding, and if you're on painkillers. The menu will disappear after a short while. If you go back to your interaction menu, you'll see that morphine is meant for pain. If you get shot, you'll get in pain. Morphine is meant for stopping that pain, but there's a limit to 3 to 4 morphines or you'll overdose. When you're shot, you often have to bandage to stop the bleeding. Depending on where you're shot, you'll have to apply a bandage to your player to stop the bleeding, followed by injecting morphine. If you get unconscious, you'll have an option to use epinephrine, but you yourself cannot use that option. Other players can use it on you since you're unconscious. That's why it's important to always keep one epinephrine on your player. All uh, medic equipment that is used is your own. And when you're treating someone else, you'll start by using their medical equipment. And this is why it's important to always carry medical equipment like bandages, morphine, epinephrine, and blood bags. Some items are restricted to medics, like the epinephrine and blood bag. Could be. We can start by testing this and it will be shot followed by me shooting you in the leg. What you're gonna do is you're gonna do a self-diagnose followed by applying bandages to the wound and then injecting morphine. So we can start by... If you do a diagnose now, you'll see that you're probably bleeding from a specific leg and that you're in pain and that you've lost some blood. You start by applying bandages to that area. You can do another diagnose to see if there's any more you need to attend to. When you're hurt you probably need morphine because you'll see that your screen gets unfocused and focused a lot. And if you're bleeding, you'll have red color on the out screens. When you're done bandaging and injecting morphine, your player is okay and ready to fight again. Now we can continue into the interaction with other players. So what you need to do now, your player is going to shoot my player and you're going to use the interaction key. The interaction key is the left windows key. So go ahead. You'll see player's name in the middle and on top you'll see treat. 
Here you can run the diagonals. You'll see you get the loading bar and it takes a lot longer for you to diagnose someone else rather than yourself. You'll have a status screen on the right. This explains where the player is injured and where to apply bandages. Once you have bandaged the player's wounds, you can continue with injecting morphine to the player. If the player is unconscious, you might need to inject epinephrine. If the player has lost a lot of blood, you might need to transfuse blood to that player. If you don't transfuse blood to that player and they lost a lot of blood, they will fall back into unconscious state once they waken up from the epinephrine. Good job. Now you understand the basics of the medical system within AGM. We will now continue by using the self-interact and looking on the next menu. This is equipment. When you press equipment, you'll have an option on top that says attach item. You have lock, backpack, and airplugs in if you have airplugs. You can start by using this and pressing airplugs in. It will pop up a screen on the right hand side that says airplugs in. This will stop your player from going deaf under firefights or explosions. If you go back to equipment and then continue by going to attach item, you'll see that you have maybe one or two items there. That's chem light or IR strobe, depending on if you have it or not. You can go ahead and attach the chem light to yourself. You'll have a sound effect followed by chem light attached. If I now continue by setting the time to night, you'll see that the chem light is attached to you and it will light up. Now let's continue with the equipment menu on the AGM. Locking backpack. Make sure that other players cannot enter your backpack while in battle without you knowing it. If you want to detach items, you can do that on top. And the cam light you just attached will detach. Now we can go over to explosives on the self-interaction menu. If you do not have any explosives, on top it will say detonate and place. This is where you place special explosives like demolition charge. If you have a diffusal kit, you'll have an option on this menu to diffuse uh, the explosive like an IED or a mine. We can now go back to the main interaction menu and look at gestures. If you look at gestures, you'll have on top, advance, go, follow and all this. If you press go, your character will make a special gesture. Gestures menu is not always used, 
but could be useful if you have if you are not allowed to talk and you're playing PvP. The next menu you'll see is team management. On the top you'll maybe see leave team, turn red, green, blue, yellow, leave group or become group leader. This menu is often used when you have to change between the colors in your fire team. Or if your fire team dies, fire team leader dies, you might have to become leader if you're second in command. We can continue now by checking temperature on the main menu. You'll see your weapon on your right hand side followed by two green lines and the loading bar. When you fire your weapon, your weapon gets hotter. So if you're using a machine gun and you fired a lot of rounds, the temperature goes up. And this increases the chance of a jam in your weapon. The next thing we're going to look at is repack magazines. When you open repack magazines, you'll see a select magazine menu. Here you can select the magazines you want to repack. If you've been in a firefight for a while, you'll see that some of your magazines are half full because you wanted to tactically reload or anything else. You can use the repack magazines menu to fill up half full magazines so that all your magazines are full again. Now you can go ahead and repack some of your magazines. Depending on how many shots you've wasted in magazines, the loading time takes either longer or shorter, depending on how many rounds you've wasted in different magazines. You can continue now, once you've done repacking magazines, to the interaction menu itself. If you go over to me and press the left Windows key, you'll have more options. We've already been through the treat medical system, but on the right hand side you'll find tap shoulder, take prisoner, and copy map. If you take prisoner, it will go into this state. From this state, you can interact with them further. You transport the prisoner or escort the prisoner. And you'll also have the possibility to release the prisoner. Maybe on your scroll wheel. There we go. The prisoner system is useful if you're playing PvP or you have to find and rescue high value targets or someone else that needs special treatment. What you can do is uh, on this menu, you can also copy a map. When you view mark maps, when you mark maps, you'll often find that team leaders mark maps in direct or just a group channel. This way, not everyone on the server will see all the markings on the map. If another team wants a friendly team's map markers, they can copy their map here. See, at this moment, there will be no markings on the map, but this you can try in-game 
on another scenario. And this closes the AGM self interaction and the interaction menu. Thank you for listening. And the next lesson will be Task Force Radio.